We're back here in the Insect Division with Associate Curator Petra Searwald, um, and we're here to talk about millipedes today. So millipedes belong to the large class of myriapods, having many legs. The big ones that you know are centipedes, having fewer legs than millipedes in general, having about one leg pair per uh, body ring, whereas millipedes have two leg pairs per body ring, so they're just leggier. So is there any credibility to centipedes having 100 legs and millipedes having 1,000 legs? No. Centipedes just have fewer legs, and I think that's what the name implies. Centipedes, millipedes are actually have completely different lifestyles. Centipedes slither sideways, like sort of in the movement like snakes when they move. They are predators, and their front, their first pair of uh, legs is modified to poison glands. And they are ill-tempered and they will bite if they are sufficiently annoyed. Millipedes, on the other hand, are peaceful vegetarians. <laughs> they really like rotting vegetation. I mean, rotting leaves is kind of the best thing in the world. They have a lot of legs, using their legs often to push basically their heart sclerotized head into the soil, pushing with all legs in the back, and kind of drilling into the soil, kind of like earthworms do, providing the soil with spaces for air and where air and water can travel. But their main job is much munchers, waste yeah. management. So they're essentially recyclers, they're like cows. Yeah. Are all of those legs in millipedes used for, for locomoting? Largely, yes, except that the front legs in males, and especially the legs around the seventh ring, are modified for, again, sperm transfer organs. These are cobulatory organs, secondary organs, highly complex. Again, we can distinguish every millipede species on the planet by the cobulatory organs. In some of these, like these adorable giant pill millipedes have legs at the end of the body modified to uh, sperm transfer cobulatory organs, also clasper organs to hold on to the female. We know almost nothing about the female receptive organ. One of my current kind of major mega projects is an morphological atlas covering all the 16 orders of millipedes. Sure, I was going to ask you, how many species do you hypothesize exist? At this point, um, I'm keeping a catalog, actually, a global catalog of millipede species, and I have 13, about 13,000 records. So that's more than all of the birds and mammals. Combined. Yeah, it is. We almost, yes. For as ecologically important as they are, I mean, essentially they're, they're recycling this undergrowth, yeah. they're facilitating the health of these forests and ecosystems. It seems um, important to me that we have more people studying them. Oh, I fully agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to like yes. inspire the next <laughs> generation, generation of um, um, millipedes. Well, experts. part of the things that we have, uh, where we have a problem with millipedes is that we don't have some of the basic research infrastructure right. in place and that is like a comprehensive morphological atlas so that if you find a new species you can go and find images and actually compare what you see to what others have already observed. Is there any sense of urgency behind needing to describe and put this information out there like are millipedes in danger and um, of Good habitat question. loss and, and if they are what would happen to these other forest ecosystems? I'm afraid that millipedes are more endangered than we think. Because they are cryptic, we often don't see them. Millipedes lay their eggs in the soil. Mm -hmm. If we clear cut areas of forest and the soil ero erodes away, the millipede eggs are gone as well. Mm -hmm. And if you then reforest, nobody's eating the rotting leaves. Mm -hmm. And so deciduous forests could drown in their own leaf litter. Well, that seems kind of unfortunate to me because if you look at the history of millipedes on Earth, Millipedes yeah. have been around as long as there has been plant matter. Yeah, 420 decompose. million years, I think, is our oldest fossil of a land-living millipede. So, so the first animals to get on land and to breathe air yes. were millipedes. Yes, were, were millipedes, were the animals, as far as we know, yes. It's, and it makes sense because that was the first food that was available on right. land. There are some millipedes actually that produce light and they are polydesmid millipedes. We have experimented here just with fluorescent, with uh, using UV light, shining them on millipedes, 
and uh, certain parts then fluoresce and it makes it easier for us to make digital images of the various body parts. And we don't have to coat the specimens with gold, what we have to do when we go to the SEM. So this is Big Mama. I would call her Big Mama. This is a native North American millipede, Narcius americanus, and we have a female here. We know that she's, she's good size, so she will be in forests out here in southern Illinois. You can see their antenna now, her antennae are coming out, mm -hmm. and she's kind of investigating, tasting the... Uh, sort of the, the, the substrate. Here you can see the movement of the legs, I think, how it goes in waves, very coordinated waves oh, yeah. uh, through her body. So we haven't really annoyed her that much, otherwise she would have sprayed us with her repugnatory uh, secretions. Mm -hmm. Most millipedes have these secretions. In some of the polydesmids, they actually may be uh, cyanide. Really? Um, so she, she can excrete cyanide? She, uh, this particular one cannot, but uh, uh, millipedes of the large order polydesmida can. It's like a little, she's, it's, she's like a little Velcro. Yes, she has claws at the end. I mean, uh, claws that they, they cannot penetrate yeah. our skin, but she has claws at the end of their feet. And so that she could climb uh, kind of on tree bark and she's so on. She's trying to bite me. Is she trying to take a little nip out yeah. of it? Yeah. I mean, she can't really pierce the skin. No, it's just like a little nip. So you see the uh, dark spots that are sort of her eye, pa her eye area. She has clusters of individual eyes in these two eye patches. Yeah, they kind of look like big puppy dog eyes, but yeah. you mentioned to me earlier that they're, they're they not really... They don't see very well. Yeah. No, no. But the species is rather common here. <laughs> it just tickles. <laughs> It still has brains on it.